to 2 Corinthians in chapter number 7, if you would please. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 7, if you would. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. I'm sorry if I said 1 Corinthians. Uh, the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Take a look, if you will, at verse number 12. We've been trying to finish off this chapter. I haven't had a lot of success with it, but I really believe seriously there's some things for us to be able to uh, take a look at that I think is important. Take a look, if you will, at, if you will, at verse number 12. It says, Wherefore, uh, though I wrote unto you, this is the Apostle Paul talking to the church at Corinth. He said, I did it not for, for his cause that had done the wrong. Talking about the person that... Uh, in First Corinthians chapter 5, the, uh, the one that was committing fornication, he said, nor for the cause that had suffered the wrong, that would be his father, if you will, that he had sinned against. He said, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear unto you. First of all, there is the care, if you will, the apostle Paul had for the church. I mean, you know the Apostle Paul cared for the church quite a bit. If you know that, say amen. amen. Matter of fact, I believe he cared for all the churches because he said the words, there's where it is, that care comes upon me daily. He said, in other words, for all the churches. I mean, you know, the Apostle Paul was one of the best for every church that there was. If you know that, say amen. amen. And you know what? He still wants the best for every church. That's why him writing 14 books of the New Testament is something we really need to focus on to see what it is that he had a word for the church and how many of those we need to be obedient to that word. You know that, say amen also. Verse number 13, if you will, I want you to see the comfort for the church. It says, therefore, we were comforted in your comfort, yea, and exceeding the more joy we for the joy of Titus because his spirit was refreshed by you all. The comfort about the church is simply the idea that in other words, the church at Corinth, that when Titus, in other words, uh, Paul's partner, if you will, uh, went there immediately, there's where it is that Titus was refreshed. He said, in what way? Well, I personally believe it is. He's talking about the idea of a spiritual refreshing. I mean, here knows our church needs to be a spiritual refreshment to every life that comes near it, around it, or anything else on that line. If you know that, say amen. Now, I don't know about you, but I find it interesting, the idea, you say, well, can you be a comfort uh, some other way? Of course you can. Meeting the needs of folks, and that's why we had this uh, uh, food giveaway, clothing giveaway this last uh, Saturday, and uh, yesterday, if you will, and folks, uh, folks were comforted out of that whole situation. Matter of fact, we ran out of food, and uh, we're going to have uh, 11 more families that we're going to be following up, in other words, getting them some food also. Now, that's one way. Uh, it really is. But how many here, more, uh, uh, more importantly, to be a, a, a spiritual refreshment is, in other words, that, is that, that, that's that much more important. If you know that, say amen. And the reason is, is because the idea of the physical comforts, in other words, can be met uh, by anybody in any way, shape, form, or fashion. There are unsaved people, secular outfits, that, in other words, that help people out with food, clothing, and such, and whatever along that line. If you know that, say amen. But you know what? Some people, my friend, can't help people spiritually, can't comfort them spiritually, can't be a refreshment to them spiritually. Only a church that I guarantee that's got its act together in, in no uncertain terms, and there's where it is, in other words, there's where it is that they can help some folks at. And how many of you know that's what this church needs to be? If you know that, say amen. Notice, if you will, that's the comfort, if you will. And we talked about the idea that this church was a refreshment, if you will, to Titus and probably those it is that came around. Then, uh, then the last thing we took a look at last week was the characteristics of this church. And take a look at verse number 14. It says, For I have boasted, if I have boasted anything to him, talking about Titus, his partner, he says, Of you, I'm not ashamed, but as we spake all things to you in truth, even so our boasting, which I made before Titus, is found a truth. That means the idea when Titus got there, check that church out. As soon as Titus got there and he found out the verse there for it is, that church had all the characteristics that a church should have. Now, I'm just going to hit them. Now, I'm not going to run. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with it. And there's where it is. Does you probably remember one of the things it is uh, that, that uh, there are seven things? Last week, we took a look at seven things. We have looked at there was, uh, uh, several, se seven things. The last two weeks, I guess, what? Seven things it is, the verse, the characteristics of this church, uh, that the verse that the Apostle Paul boasted about. Does anybody remember any of them? They all start with an S. Does that help you? You might remember any of them? Okay, it's wonderful. Nobody remembers none of the characteristics of this church. 
Not this one, but there was the church at Corinth. Yes. Serving. serving. That was one of them. It certainly was. was the idea about serving. Uh, there's where it is. It just said, uh, he said that so that you became behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. They used those spiritual gifts in other words to be able to serve, if you will, those in their church and those in his outside. Go ahead. The saints, well, the first thing that makes a statement is, makes a statement, he says, uh, under the church uh, of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified, he says, in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. Does anybody remember what the word saint means? Yeah. Holy. holy one. A uh, holy one. So we have got some, we got some of those that serve, those that are, that are saints. Can anybody remember any of them? If you don't, that's, that's okay. I'm going to run through this real, real, real quick. Anybody else? Remember they all start with S? <laughs> Did I help you out here? Okay, yeah, go ahead. Soul winners. Yeah, they were soul winners. Mm -hmm. They made this statement. It says, or even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed, he said, in you. He said, you guys are testifying about the Lord Jesus Christ on a regular basis. Whenever you do that, folks, there's where it is you can win some folks to the Lord. If you know that, say amen. Well, let me just hit it. I can see right now some of you are having a... A little trouble. You've been probably have you been asleep all night? I would imagine. Uh, just got woke up here. I don't know how to handle this thing. Uh, the, first of all, it's the idea of the sanctified ones. And sanctified means the idea. There's where it is that they dedicated their life to the Lord, uh, if you will, and being obedient to new truth. They're sanctified. The saints, if you will, they serve. We talk about that. Uh, the idea that they were also single-minded. The idea, there's where the Apostle Paul said, I beseech you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus, that you all speak the same thing. He talked about there be no divisions among you, that you be perfectly joined together with the same mind and the same judgment. That means a singleness of heart. I mean, you know, that's important also. If you know that, say amen. Then the idea, when you talk about the soul winners, we also talked about that also. Uh, then all of a sudden, there's where it is that they, these individuals were set free. As a matter of fact, let's turn over there right quick, if we could. Turn over to Second, uh, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, in chapter number 6. Let's hit that thing right quick. And the reason is, I want to just show you how, how important, if you will, in other words, it is to be a church that has a, a, a church full of people that have been set free. If you think that's important, say amen. Notice if you will, he says, no, you're not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Well, that shouldn't be, that, that shouldn't be something surprisingly. How many here know the idea that the Lord is the unrighteous? Not going to inherit the kingdom of God. If you know that, say amen. But notice, if you will, the next phrase. Please pay attention to the next phrase. And be not, and not and, be not deceived, neither fornicators. Well, I don't know about you, but what's the difference between the unrighteous? And then all of a sudden he starts listing off the words he sins. Well, can I share with you really the, the, the point of it? The unrighteous simply means those it is that are not right with God. If you're not right with God, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Right. But, but what's the difference, in other words, when it changes over to the be not deceived? Well, the change comes in that there's a lot of people that believes that people can live in sin, still go to heaven. The apostle Paul is blowing that thing to smithereens. Right. He's showing the idea that in other words, even if you've been saved, even if you've gotten right with the Lord and you fall back and backslide, in other words, and you end up becoming a, a fornicator, he said, in other words, an, or an idolater, or an adulterer, or nor the effeminate. And by the way, that word effeminate is taken out of most modern translations, taken completely out. Now, I don't know about you. You say, well, what's the problem with that? Listen, I don't know about you, but how many here know the idea? We don't need a bunch of effeminate, in other words, uh, 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 men running around by no stretch of the imagination. Oh, and by the way, if, in other words, that's taken out of modern translations, and somebody doesn't read that, somebody doesn't preach that, somebody, uh, this folks, my friend, they're going to end up being effeminate and think, in other words, they're still going to be all right with God. Now, how many knows that's not true? Somebody needs to understand that and realize that. You say, well, aren't they talking about homosexuals or lesbians? The idea that homosexuals, the answer is no, not at all. That's coming. But when it comes to the effeminates, the idea in the verse, that's not the way it is in the verse a man ought to be. He should not be effeminate in any way, shape, form, or fashion. 
Okay? And when they start taking it out, my friend, there's where it is that people are going to fall, if you will, in the middle of that crack. And there's where it is they're going to sit there and find themselves in a world of hurt with God. He says, nor are the, or the feminine, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. There's the phrase that deals with the idea about homosexuality and lesbianism, sodomites, if you will, and the idea about lesbianism. That's what that's talking about right there. And then watch this. A little bit further he goes. He said, nor abusers, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit, what's it say, the kingdom of God. Now, you say, well, where does the characteristic act, in other words, listen now, this is important. Where does the characteristic act, characteristic act that there is found here in this church? Well, right here, verse number 11, it says, and such were some of you. you. That means the idea, that church is filled with a bunch of, if you will, individuals that I just got through reading about. They were filled at one time, my friend, with those that is, first of all, that were not right with God, then they got right with God. Right. Then all of a sudden, there were those that is that were fornicators, those that is that were idolaters, those that were adulterers, those that were effeminate, those that were nor abusers of themselves with mankind, talking about sodomites, if you will, and, and, and lesbians. He said, nor thieves, nor covet, 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 covetous, covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners. It says, and such were some of you. Now, can I talk to y'all just for a minute right here? How many of you know this is important and most assuredly is? I don't know, but we need to have a church full of these kind of people. Yeah. Yes. We said, you guys are a little slow on that. You didn't, I think you act like that verse didn't want them around here. Let's try it again. How many of you know we need a church full of these kind of people that were that way at one time? If you know that, say amen. 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 Okay, just want to check because uh, otherwise you ought to. You ought, to, you, ought to, you, ought to, you ought to ask yourself, where'd you come from? Right. Yeah. So you're not in this list? Yeah. Right. Is that how good you were? Is that how good of a sinner you were? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> come on. I'll, I'll wake you up right quick. You may not be when you got here, but you didn't get that way, ain't you? Yeah. All of a sudden, though, you're breaking out a little bit of a sweat right there. It's not because it's 70. <laughs> Come on. Right. And such were some of you. Yeah. I mean, I know that means these people, by, these people who was in this church, have been set free. Yeah. Now, I, you say, well, we'll say, well, they go, well, well, is this true for every church? Well, I, I'm hoping so. I don't necessarily believe so. Uh, there's some, there's some churches I personally believe can't handle some of these folks. Right. Now you do realize every single person that there is that's mentioned those verses that I just got through reading, I have been in this church, come on, are in this church, I have, uh, that, that were these, have been, or everything else on that line. Now I don't know about you, but you want to know why it is the reason I want to bring that out? I want people to know the idea of this church, I guarantee you, gets you set free from whatever, whatever bondage you find yourself in. You may go back through the list again right quick. You say, are you kidding me? Are you trying to make the statement that in other words, that we, you've actually got people like this saved in this church? Oh, yeah, on a regular basis. Amen. Oh, my Amen. goodness gracious. Alive. We do this on a regular basis. Right. I don't know about you, but I actually remember one time, watch this, when it comes to drunkenness, I had somebody went to another church, said, I need you to go by and visit my, uh, my uh, grandma. I said, okay, I'll go visit your grandma. I'll be glad to. But immediately you get to thinking with the idea, well, why, why can't you go by and visit? Why can't you get your pastor to go by there and visit? Why can't you get some of your people to go by there? Well, one reason is because is, is they believe social drinking was okay. Right. Well, when I went over there, grandma was a drunk. She's 70 plus years old and had been on a six-month drunk. And of all things, she makes vodka and Diet Coke. How I many you know you buy, you got you a pretty bad drunk whenever you gotta mix vodka and diet coke in. I was just gonna say it's not just social drinking that some churches are okay with anymore. Some churches are okay with that whole list and don't think they have it. That's right. Yeah, that, that's that, that's true. Yeah, it really is. So so that's the idea we have. So you say, well what did you do? Well I got to preach got to preach to her, got to witness to her, what have you got her in a conviction. Uh, the power of God came upon her, started breaking, if you will, the words that uh, 
bondage that was in her life. She said, I do want to quit. I do want to get things turned around. So what do I need to do? I said, you need to let me pour every bit of that vodka and the Diet Coke. <laughs> Saying, why is that? Diet Coke. I, I don't like Diet Coke. It tastes like, it tastes like cough syrup. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Say amen. amen. <laughs> tastes like cough syrup. Okay, so then I'm going to go back to the idea. So she goes, no, no. Oh, I said, no. So you realize there's where it is immediately that the power is not going to be broken. Right. Not going to be broken. I said, no, 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 no. You need to let me pour that out. Let me pour it out. Let me get rid of it. Down the drain. Down the drain, yeah. I, not, <laughs> not, pouring, not pouring it down, I'm pouring it out. Some of you think, did you get rid of it? Yeah, yeah. So, so they sure enough to her, she finally let me know she poured down the poured down the sink. Good. I poured it down the sink, what have you, and that broke the power of evil in her life. Seventy some odd years old, seventy plus years old, hey. been on a six month drunk. What was interesting, she hadn't drunk the verse in the most part of her life. Hmm. She just ended up there somehow in other words becoming a, a drunk, if you will. There in the last part of her life, why I'm not really sure, didn't go into that, what have you on that line. But how many of you know that's pretty good? So I've been on a six month drunk, in other words, there's where it is. Be obedient, if you will, to the Lord. And then when she when she came to our church, ended up going forward, or ended up getting saved. Come on, somebody be saved, man. So that's the idea. One of the characteristics of a church, a real true church, is the idea, my friend, that you've got people that in that church have been set free from what? Well, from being, if you will, the idea of not liking God. If they've been the involved in fornication, idolatry, if you will, adulterers, effeminate, abusers of themselves of mankind, talking about, uh, about sodomites, homosexuals, lesbians, if you will, uh, or more thieves. They say, whoa, 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 stop, stop, stop. Are you trying to tell me that you've actually seen people in this church that that's the background they come from? And the answer is, oh, yes, no getting around that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've seen, you know, transsexuals. Right. Come on, somebody needs to say amen about right. that. Amen. I don't know about you. One of the characteristics of the church ought to be the idea you've got a church full of people that have been set free amen. from some of the most tremendous bondages that have ever grabbed a hold of anybody in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Amen. I mean, those, that's exactly how this thing, the thieves, if you will, or covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners, they're not going to inherit the kingdom of God, but notice that such were some of you, but you are washed. They, I mean, notice these folks need to be washed. Amen. They need to be washed by the blood of the Lamb. Yes. Right. He said that were these said that they be sanctified. That's what he's writing to begin with. Those have been sanctified. As soon as they found out it wasn't right, in other words, to be involved in fornication, they stopped it. Amen. That's they became obedient unto new truth. That's the sanctified, just in case you're wondering. But all of a sudden, they figured, figured, figured out the idea that uh, these folks don't know what they're He said, well, if you can see somebody that was a feminine, in other words, get that thing turned around or no longer a feminine. The answer is yes. Good. No getting around that. Good. Came right out of this church, by the way, just in case you're wondering. Involved in wizardry, if you will, involved in drugs, sorcery, and such. And what? Hey, come on, somebody. And we're talking about the Lord, that's the idea. Involved with stuff along that line. We have seen them that have turned around, and the idea of the Lord is no longer becoming a sinner. Right. No longer becoming, if you will, they, they were a homosexual, a sodomite. They stopped that nonsense. Amen. Somebody ought to say Amen. Those of these that are lesbians, what have stopped that nonsense. Amen. Those of these that are thieves. See, sometimes we get we get all excited about some of the things. We act like, we act like that. Now, as a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you an illustration. It was not now. I the 11 o'clock service. I, I guess I'll get to it first this morning. Maybe we may end up being tonight. About the power being broken in people's lives. Right. Drugs, if you will. The idea about drunkenness, that's right here. Right. But the idea about some of these other things, I promise you, are just as, just as, as much of a, of a bondage as anything else is. Right. No getting around it. Being involved in fornication, pornography. I mean, you know, that's that's high on the list of a whole lot of folks, I guarantee it. You know, and sir, and not just men, but also women also. As a matter of fact, they're making a statement right now that the age group that we're just watching pornography all the way goes down to about eight number years old. This is where they're, they're they're looking into the situation, eight, ten, eleven, and stuff along that line. I mean, you know the idea. And by the way, because all it is 
It's right here. It's right here. Just the other day, I told Brother Paul, I'll say it, I'll say it publicly, just so in case somebody wants to check my uh, my browser history and what have you. I was looking for Fox News. The reason is because you can't get the truth off of anything else. You can't get from mainstream media. Uh, you had Rudy, Judy, Rudy, Rudy, Rudy Giuliani do an hour and a half, in other words, press conference, in other words, with two experts behind him as far as that goes, uh, showing clearly the idea about words, voter fraud. Yeah. No getting around that. Uh -huh. Fox News carried it. The rest of them, my friend, didn't carry it, except for little blurbs and blip, blips and blurbs, this is real, here, there, and yonder, because they don't want to, they don't want to, they don't want to go there. They said, Bill, what's your point, Brother Danny? See, keep me on track. So I, I'm Googling Fox News on my computer, so it is, in other words, I can sit there. So I'm scrolling down because I'm looking for the earth, in other words, you know, going back because I didn't think I didn't see the first part of it or something along that line, and I was looking for Fox News. I scroll down Fox News, in other words, right now, Fox News Line, Fox News Thus, Fox News Such, so and so, roll up a little bit, there's pornography right there. And we're not talking about, in other words, a listing for it, we're talking about pictures. So I shut that baby down in a heartbeat. So, there you go. I mean, it's right there. I'm, I'm checking for Fox News and pornography pictures come up. Are you kidding me? What is up with this nonsense? That's right. But you nail this thing down. The power, my friend, of God can break the verse. Any kind of bondage you, you find yourself in, in any way, shape, form, or fashion. This is just a partial list, just in case you're wondering here. And here's where it is immediately. The Apostle Paul said, this church, and I'm bragging on this church, is what it is that the Apostle Paul said. Titus found out exactly what it is that I said was the a matter of fact truth. And therefore it is immediately he said there and said, these people, there, this church is full of people that have been set free. free. That's good. Somebody ought to say amen. So there's the there's where it is he's talking about. He said, and such were some of you, but you're washed, you're sanctified, you're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. That's good. Somebody say amen. amen. And when I talk about that, notice that it says, in verse 12, it says that all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful unto me, but I'll not be brought under the power of Amen. And I mean, you know, that's a gospel, my friend, that we need to be preaching. Amen. The gospel, in other words, that you don't, have, you don't have to be brought under the power of anything in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Somebody say amen. amen. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And by the way, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it's the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also the Greek. Right. Um, matter of fact, brother, would you go uh, take that thing down? It's, it's, it's a little warm in here. Amen. Just about Amen. right. A little bit warm. Yeah. If, if, you, if you just want to raise your hand. Okay. Okay. If it's too hot, raise your hand. Okay. If it's uh, if it's uh, if it's too cold in here, raise your hand. Okay. You need to go to the doctor first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning. Okay. Get you an appointment. Say. Uh, <laughs> Everybody else is hot. Okay, just put it on 68. No, that don't, it don't work that way in the wintertime. All well, the trees and trees, leaves are brown. <laughs> it don't work that way. So don't, don't do that. Oh, we're alive, aren't we? Okay. <clears throat> what was I at for? I rudely interrupted Easy. myself. <laughs> he had that thing. He had that thing spitting snowballs out. Amen. So, okay. Uh, anyway. Okay, such are some of you. So this is the idea. Now the last thing that I want to hit and just kind of run away from, right? Run, run, from, run with is the idea. The third, the last thing number seven was in other words that they were sanctified, they were saints, they were serving, they were soul winners, they were set free. Amen. What else about that? I missed something there. Serving? Did I say serving? And then I said serving. Soul winners, serving, saints, and saints, soul winners. Oh, single-mindedness. Yeah, single-mindedness. They were set free. Last thing, go back to our text scripture, if you will, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. And take a look, I'll show you what they also were. Verse, verse number 11, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse number 11. He said, for behold, the self-same thing that you sorrowed after a godly sword, what carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourselves. Ye what indignation, ye what fear, ye what vehement desire, ye what zeal, ye what revenge, and all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. You know what they were? They were serious. Yeah. 
And this was another problem we're in some churches. The idea they're not serious about the things of God. They're not zealous, if you will, about the things of God. They're not serious about the things of God. They're not serious about the idea when sin comes inside the church as far as that goes. They just let it roll and flow. So I say, well, just sweep it under the rug. How many of you know you keep sweeping stuff under the rug and you'll trip over it sometime? It's called being a stumbling block. So we're sweeping nothing under the carpet, my friend. Matter of fact, you need to deep clean that carpet. Come on, somebody say amen. That's, that's the idea. They're serious. They're serious, my friend, in and out of this whole situation there. That's one of the, that's one of the characteristics of the church at Corinth. In other words, it may not be known or seen clearly, but the, the apostle Paul said basically and understandably the idea in the verse, this is what the verse, the characteristics were of, of what it is they did. Now, let me, let, me, let me go a little bit further. That's, that's the idea. Now, number, number four, the thing we're going to take a look at, and this is my, 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 my thought for the, verse, the, 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 the thing today is the idea, I want you to take a look at the caution if you will, of the church. Verse number 15, if you will. Verse number 15 in our text scripture. It says, and his inward, effect, uh, inward affection, ooh, look at that, we're almost at the end of the chapter. Yes, we're going to get away from here one of these days. Probably another two, three weeks, but we're about finished. Uh, it says, and, and, and his inward affection is more abundant toward you. This is talking about Titus. It says, Titus is man fell in love with this church. It says, man fell in love with this church. He said, I went there, kind of worried about the whole situation as far as that goes. When I got there, my goodness, I, I can see why the Apostle Paul has a care. I can see why he's got a concern. I can see the characteristics, if you will, of this church. I can see the idea about the comfort the earth they brought to my life, the spiritual comfort. I can see the characteristics in this church. But then he said at the same time, the idea of the Apostle Paul said, and his inward affection is more abundant toward you. Talk about the, the Titus fell in love with this church. Hey, I mean, oh, people, people, people need to fall in love with this church. Amen. Come on, we need to fall in love with this church. Amen. We need to get a t-shirt that says, I love my church. Yeah. Get a t-shirt. Put, uh, I love my church on this side. and Put a, put a one on the back that says, uh, sin, uh, no sin. Sin not. <laughs> sin. And put a red thing. What do you call that thing? A red circle with a slash through. The idea. I mean, how many, how many wear it? If you wear it, one says, I love my church, and no sin on the back, raise your hand. All right, three people. Okay. <laughs> Why? First of all, because I don't love this church. I hate its guts. Second of all, I want to sin all I can. That's the idea. <clears throat> Lighten up, folks. I'm trying to wake you up here. I know it's been, been rough all night long sleeping. <laughs> he says, whilst, he said, he said, I fell in love with this church whilst he remembered the obedience of you all, how with fear and trembling ye, fear and trembling, ye received him. Are you ready for this now? Can okay. I unpack this just for a, a few moments right quick? Uh -huh. I'd like to spend a little bit of time on this thing. First of all, the idea, I want you to see the faithfulness of the words in this caution. Notice he makes the statement, he said, whilst he remembered Remember the obedience of you all. Okay. Now, the next of all, I want you to see that he makes a statement. He says, and how with fear and trembling ye receive him. You know what that means is the idea they have a respect, if you will. A reverence, if you will, for now, about God's name. Now, let me get to, I'll, I'll get to that verse next week, possibly. I don't think I'll be able to get to it this morning. But let's take a look at the idea about this obedience for the faithfulness, if you will, of the Lord. Take a look at the first part of it. Remember the obedience of y'all, of you, of you all. Now, when we talk about the idea about obedience, I want you to just take a look. Take a look at Second Corinthians. That's the book we're in right now. Go back to chapter number two, if you would. I want you to notice what the Apostle Paul says in verse number nine. And he's talking about the idea about where you remember the guy that committed the fornication, if you will. And how it is, the words they kicked him out of the church, let him know that the words were that concerned. He was lost as a goose in a snowstorm. Didn't dare call him brother to brother. Didn't call him anything, something like that. There was to comfort him in any way, shape, form, or fashion. And by the way, that's one of the worst things that you can do. Somebody actually, my friend, be careful what you call. Be, be, be kind. Call him sir or ma'am or something along that line. Um, something along that. The idea about calling him brother, sister, you're not helping them. He said, so contrary wise, God would rather forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with, 
woman over much sorrow. Here's what happened. They ousted him, if you will, out of the church so bad, or so bad as far as that goes. This guy got to the point wondering and worried if he could ever get right with God. You see that, say amen. amen. That's the way they treated him, and that's fine. That's okay. This is what was needed. It was needed to bring him the word. But that's what he says in verse 8. He says, Wherefore I beseech you that he would confirm your love toward him. How many of you know the idea? Of, watch this and listen to me very carefully. How many of you know words, you, can, you, can, you can love the sinner, but you don't need to ever love that sin. Right. And, help, right. and never give them the idea that you're accepting them while they are living. Right. You've got to make sure you don't do that. That's the worst thing it is you can do. And by the way, uh, somebody somebody might say, well, how do you handle that situation when it's your family and what have you? You're near and dear to them. The holidays are coming up and such, what have you, on that line. Uh, do what you want to do. Best thing to do, they need to know what you think about them yeah. in no uncertain terms regardless of what you do for them, about them, or anything else on that line. They need to know the idea as far as you're concerned. They're going to die and go to hell. You nail this thing down, you can think what you want, you can believe what you want, you can do what you want as far as that goes. You nail this down, your family needs to know exactly where they stand at as far as that, as far as that goes with you and what the Bible says. And the two need to match. Yeah, my goodness, you can't go out here and still love them and work with them, do with them, and deal with them, and minister unto them. Of course you can. That's the dumbest thing it is I think it ever be imagined. I mean, you know, the Bible said the, the Lord, the Lord, in other words, takes care of, takes care of, I mean, you know, actually in Israel, in the, in the wilderness for 40 years, did he feed them? Yeah. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Oh, I'm just checking. Did he make sure they had clothes? Yeah. Well, at least one pair. I mean, did he make sure they had shoes? Yeah. That's right. That's the way, that's what you do with somebody back to actually give them one car and give them one pair of shoes. Yeah, get that. Oh, you get Do this thing right and say, Wherefore, proceed that you would do from your life. How the world you do, you just got kept keep, keeping somebody out of the church. Real big, real easy. Whenever they come or something along that line, let them know you're glad they're here. Right. Come on. And when you go visit them, let them know, hey, listen, love you as far as that goes. They would like to see you get back in there, start serving the Lord, start living for him, and that, 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 how you know, that's the way to do this situation. Yeah. Dumbest thing is you can do is sit there and you think, let them think it is for a second that they're still all right with God. That's the dumbest thing you can ever do. You'll send them a message, I guarantee you, my friend, I know you don't want to sin, but you got to be careful about how it is that you do this situation. That's, yeah, that's, that's, what, that's, that's what you got to do. He said, no, no I'm, I'm getting bogged down this thing. But I do want to let you know how to handle the situation. That he said, well, what do you do? Well, sometimes if you have to sit down and eat with it as far as that goes, uh, bring it back up again. Bring it back up again. Hey, can I talk to you about it for, a little, uh, for a minute over about the, this situation of thus, such, and so on and so on? Just start dealing with the whole thing. Right. Listen, we've done that over the years. There's no getting around it. We have done that over the years. We've sat down with folks because, listen, the idea about eating with someone, be careful about that. If you're not careful, they're going to sit there and say, well, you know, they took me out to eat, what have you, that, or they provided something on that. Like, if you're not careful, they're going to think over it. So they're accepting me. Do not let them think that. <laughs> Not for us, not for a moment. Somewhere along the line, sit down and deal with it. Sit down with others and talk to them about this whole thing. Amen. Just, just, Amen. just make it, just make sense. To show them the idea of others that you do care for them, you love them, you want the best for them. Start to finish in on certain terms. And how many times when it comes to family, that can be a difficult situation. Yeah. They also surely can. A very difficult situation. But it still needs to be dealt with. He said, Wherefore I beseech you that you would confirm your love towards him. And verse number 9 says, For to this end also did I write, that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient, what does it say? In all things. How many of you know when the Apostle Paul wrote his letters to those churches? What was he looking for? He's looking to see if they were going to be obedient to things that he is in the verse that he sat there and wrote to them. Yeah. 
Well, that's the idea. This is the point. As a matter of fact, he, I imagine he threw some things out there just to see how they would act and react. Come on. Whenever I preach, you want to guess what happened? But it's not. It didn't come from him. It came from the Lord. Right. Right. Matter of fact, that's what it is. That's the state. Matter of fact, I'm glad you did that. Uh, that. That people didn't understand that it didn't come from the Lord. Now, watch this now. You can realize some people, some people couldn't care less. Remember, they got to the point where they weren't going to listen to the Apostle Paul. The churches in Asia Minor got to the point they're not going to listen to the Apostle Paul any longer. They turned away from him. Well, what's interesting, so what are they turning away from? They're turning away from the word of the Lord, if you will. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. In 1 Corinthians, and chapter number uh, 14 is an interesting, interesting uh, passage of Scripture. Let me go to the end because it's right on the end. And went here in the wild. Yeah, there it is. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. There's the Apostle Paul giving, in other words, if you will, evidence of the idea of the inspiration of, of him in his own self. Right. Can you guys see that? If you can't say it, man. Now, the Apostle Peter did exactly the same thing. Peter sat there and said the verse, the things he writes, the words he writes, the verse, the idea, um, as scripture, he said the verse, and, and other people twist and rest, if you will, twist the scriptures to their own destruction, just like they do the other scriptures. So he's called, then Peter is calling Paul's writings scripture. Somebody ought to say amen. Did you think you came this morning? Yeah. And, and they don't know you're going to sleep all night. And here too, huh? Okay. Okay, and notice if you will, these things that I write you are the commandments of the Lord. Now let's go back to where we were at. Where was we at? Right here. For this end, also did I write that you might know the proof of you, whether you be obedient, what do you say? In all things. Not just some things. All things. Now that's why he that's why he wrote. That's why he wrote the uh, wrote these things. He's writing there to see the verse where these people are going to be at, what they're going to do as far as that goes. Now, as long as he can write to them, he can, if you will, in other words, minister to them, in other words, at distance. Now, sometimes, in other words, whenever he found out there were problems here, there, and yonder, what he would do is, is he would actually go there. As a matter of fact, he's trying to get back, in other words, to the church of Corinth, in other words, as far as that goes, uh, in the second, second chapter, in second Corinthians, in chapter, I think it is, 13, he makes the statement. He said, you know what, I've been there a couple of times, I think I need to come back by. The reason is because there, there were some problems inside the church. Now they weren't they were they they were big problems. Now let me qualify that. They were they weren't big pro they weren't big problems in the sense of the idea that they couldn't be taken care of, but if need be, he's gonna show up his own self and take care of these individuals face to face. Right. He said, look, and the reason is because most false teachers, false prophets, false teachers and what have you, they try to do all this stuff sneaky wise. They try to do these things, if you will, on the slide. Remember the, remember I talked about the creeps? Those that are creeping in the church, yeah. they're not going to creep around while the Apostle Paul's there. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. They're not going to come to the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul chews them up and spit them out. Yeah. There's no getting around that. Matter of fact, he makes a statement. He said, I'm glad that those, those of you the Philippians, that you're obedient unto the Lord, whether I'm there or not. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. You want to know why he told them that? He said, because some of the churches that I've ministered to, that I've uh, I've, I've trained, I've, 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 uh, I've, uh, I've established these churches, I'll get in there, I'll establish these churches, what have you, after I had to leave the verse to go someplace else, there's where it is, the verse, the Judaizers came in, false teachers came in, those it is would rise up among them and speak perverse things, rose up, and there's where it is, while he is gone, there's where it is, they started sowing their seeds of doubt, if you will, right. and their doctrine, their doubt, doubt, doubt. Uh, damnable doctrines right along with that. And there's where the Apostle Paul made the clear cut statement. He said, You know what? And when, I, if I, when, when I can, and when I get you, I'm going to come back by there. In other words, if I have to, in other words, we may have to have a, a little tay to tay, if you will, here. Now, he said that to the church of Corinth. They did have some problems. Don't misunderstand me. You can read it too clearly as far as that goes. I don't think it was something, in other words, that was just widespread, if you will. I think, in other words, it were just. Uh, just elements, if you will, here, there, and yonder. Remember, I made the statement the last time we got together about the divisions that they had. Some say, well, I'm Paul. I'm Apollos. 
I am of Cephas. Y'all remember the words that the vision that there was? Come on. There's where it is. Apparently, the words there's where it is. They hopefully, he got that pretty well kind of straightened out a little bit. It didn't seem like he dealt with it that much in 2 Corinthians necessarily, except for there's one group, if you will, that he talks about in chapter 11. We'll, we'll look into there. When we get there, I don't want to, I want to go into it in too much depth. But they were allowing, in other words, some of these, some, somebody that claimed to be apostles were coming in there, in other words, and started to lead them astray. Those are the ones that he started dealing with. He said, in other words, when I come, he said, if need be, he said, in other words, I will take care of them uh, if we have to because, you know, that's, that's the way this thing goes. So, but as long as he's writing, he's doing this to see whether they're obedient. What happens is he starts sending Titus back around there. He starts sending Timothy back around there. Uh, Epaphroditus, yes, go ahead. So that you can make your point. You need to be able to 
to speak, if you will, uh, with uh, authority. Authority. Authority, and there's not as a scribe. Make sure his words you got this thing all lined up like that. Did you want to say something? Okay. Uh, uh, let's pray. Let's pray. We'll get back to this thing. Actually. Father, praise our Lord. You bless the Lord your words that goes forth. Look at day. Thank you. Praise this time to come together. Ask you to bless your prayer to your mind. Pray. Ask in Jesus' first name. Amen. You